Now, the Harvard project uh, published multiple volumes on the Kumbh Mela, and this is just the beginning. They sent teams from various departments. The idea was that we would bring the various schools at Harvard together in ways where there's inquiry happening on a particular issue that they would be able to look at it in a cross-disciplinary way. Once the urban planning and the religious studies folks wanted to come together, there was also interest from the public health school. And there was interest from the business school folks as well, because each of these aspects are so relevant to the Mela. You know, architecture, to look at well, how they're building this city, to make Indians feel very proud that we're going to study the great architectural feat of putting up such a city. But they're collecting data. They're collecting data on how it's done. And they are, while they are there, they're building a database on who comes, you know, trying to register people's mobile numbers, trying to keep track of them even after they return to their villages, interviewing these people. So they have people from public health who are looking for how disease is being spread so that they can come up with, uh, they're claiming they'll help, but they're coming up with vulnerabilities. They're coming up with where are we vulnerable? Where can we be attacked? Where can we be, where can we be criticized? Okay. We had a project in mind to support the Coom, the Coom administration, for them to have a data set to look at their healthcare utilization and the potential for outbreaks over the course of the Coom. Uh, we call it surveillance, and surveillance just is that. It, it is looking for symptoms uh, or diseases that may occur in the population in time and place, and to be able to identify that rapidly, and then to be able to investigate it. There's a network of the sector hospitals at the field level that we've engaged, and we're going to track their registries. So all the patients they see in any given day, over time, but we've set up a system for them to digitize all this information on iPads. Um, and so like, I, think, I think what we should kind of do from here... Over 400,000 patients that have been treated thus far at the hospitals uh, in the Kumela area. Our study has captured about 10% of those patients, over 30,000, making it the largest data set uh, that has ever been recorded uh, for a transient mass gathering patient population. It gives you a lot of insight into a lot of the disease burden and a lot of the treatments and you know, a lot of the resources that are required to manage a population of this size. I came initially with the goal to figure out sort of the flow of how flowers got here. So from fields to trucks to markets to trucks to the mela and then being sold. And I wanted to figure out who was selling them, who was buying them, and how they were being used. Um, but when I got here, I realized that the new direction of the coom has been a sort of environmental one. So this green coom movement has really opened my eyes to the problem of flowers being sort of ending up in the Ganga here on the banks. The Mahakum Mela occurs every 12 years. The estimates for how many people will pass through here in the aggregate varies in the tens of millions, certainly 30 million at its peak. There is no other uh, agglomeration of humanity at that scale anywhere on the face of the earth. And so it's a real interesting laboratory within which some deep questions about all sorts of issues, urbanization, public health, property rights, uh, social agglomeration, epidemiology, all sorts of questions can be asked. So that's the reason why we zeroed in on it and uh, decided to create the infrastructure to allow researchers to come here. Dinah Eck from Harvard, who is leading this Kumbh Mela project, said that she's very sad that uh, uh, feminist NGOs haven't really taken the responsibility to do their job yet. And she hopes that this will change. And Ford Foundation soon thereafter started giving grants, started empowering, uh, you know, uh, NGOs that are going to be Kumbh Mela watchdogs. So you will see a whole lot of Kumbh Mela watchdogs producing all kinds of reports, PhD dissertations being written on this. This will be the new fashionable site for anthropologists, human rights workers, and so on. People who come here are convenienced, you might say, by the fact that there is this wonderful grid of an urban infrastructure that has been placed here so that uh, they can live here for a month or for a few days. But the reason they come is, is something far more nuanced than that. Uh, they come because they uh, want to bathe in the, in the meeting rivers, in the Sangam of 
the Ganga and the Yamuna and the Saraswati. And they come because they want to have the blessings of the religious teachers. Our students are mapping in a different sense. They're looking at the meaning behind the facades, at what takes place on these streets and within these pavilions. Okay, so various departments, religion, wanting to look for, you know, uh, is it a Brahmin dominated thing, which it is not. Uh, are Muslims being allowed and are Christians being allowed because it's secular and plural and we should allow them. So they are, they are in, they're almost like taking over the future direction and molding our attitudes and they bought off and co-opted many swamis, many political leaders, yeah, many media people. So I got to know this through my uh, travels and through my investigations with Indians who are working for these Western agencies. Ford Foundation is in the act. So uh, the meanwhile, the people who are the real keepers of the tradition from a spiritual point of view aren't aware of all this. When I talked to them, many of them were very grateful. Some said, oh, we don't have to worry. We've been around for 8,000 years. It won't matter. Some said, it's not my job. Maybe the government will do it. Some were actually hostile to me, sold out in the sense that, who are you? Why are you interfering? It's our business. You don't have to worry. We trust those guys. They are very good to us. They come and give us gifts. They give us grants. You know, they are very traditional in their dress and they talk to us nicely. So, so, so you get a range of reactions from different people who, uh, who ought to be better informed. And hardly any reaction, hardly any person seems to really have studied this matter seriously. So this is a matter of concern. I think I've uncovered one more very big thing. And for the last 25 years, I've been trying to uncover things that people need to notice. People have not been noticing. And I think this is probably one of the biggest uh, yet to be discovered uh, things that uh, you know, I have come across uh, in, in, my, in my recent career.